Hey guys and welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and implementation testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorial I taught you about uh, how it works exactly the DNS spoofing, DNS poisoning and about this software how it works exactly. So I will also go ahead and at the same time start my Kali Linux so it will be easier for us to understand exactly how it will work. So I will just open my Linux and I will power this on. So I would be using a uh, Windows version of the Ethercap. You can, uh, sorry, not the Windows, the Linux version of the Ethercap. If you uh, want Windows, then you can still go and do that. I would be teaching for Windows uh, version how you need to do that, but I will be showing that on uh, Kali Linux. Uh, Windows would be on my PowerPoint presentation, and the actual tutorial will be on the Kali Linux. So it will be easier for you to work on either of the uh, versions. So to start the Ethercap, just go over here in the applications, internet and you can see Ethercap over here, just go ahead and start that. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and X maximize this. And you can go ahead and select this over here and the first thing that we need to do would be to go ahead and change uh, the entries of the yahoo.com. So you can go ahead and type, uh, let me check if I have GDIT installed. Okay, I have it. So I'll just type GEDIT slash user share and ethercap and ether period DNS. Okay, I did not expect this to be NT. Let me check. Let me just open that and see. Okay, so we have it's a character PNG or filter fields and okay we don't have the it appear DNS file so let's go ahead and check all of these files okay no this is not the one that we want and let's check the it appear filter we don't want the filter as well let's check uh, I believe that we have different versions so it will look like ethergap dns, ether dns, host file for dns plugin. Perfect. So we need to go ahead and check for the sample host file on the dns proof. So let's go ahead and check that where it is exactly. Not here. I need, I believe we will need to go ahead and create another ether dns file, which is unlike anything else here yeah, you will be seeing on Windows version. So yeah, that's right. Let's go ahead and open this. And over here, I will be typing two specific things that would be the yahoo.com. So, uh, uh, and I'll show you over here as well how exactly it will work. Okay, so it will look like this. You will have to add these two things yahoo.com and www.yahoo.com. And the IP address is in front of them. And uh, once the file is configured and saved, you are free to execute a command string that will launch the attack and the command string uses uh, options such as hyphen T which specifies the use of the text based interface or uh, uh, hyphen Q that runs the command in quiet mode so that captured packets are not output to the screen, hyphen P DNS spoof that specifies the use of DNS spoof plugin and hyphen M ARP that initiates MAA and MITM ARP poisoning attack to intercept packets between the host and it specifies the entire network as the targets of the attack and the final command string for our purposes would be ethercap period exe space hyphen t space hyphen q uh, lowercase q space hyphen p dns spoof hyphen m and arp space slash slash space slash slash the space uh, the slash uh, the four slashes specifies the entire network as the targets of the attack and the final command string would look like this this portion over here once you go ahead and run this running the air command uh, would uh, begin a two-phase attack first positioning the arp cache of the device on the network and then transmitting the fake dns query response so as you can see we have the two phases of the attack over here one is the configuration and another one is the actual attack 
and once initiated, anybody attempting to access the yahoo.com will be redirected to our malicious site. And defending against DNS spoofing, now I will teach you how that will work. Now we know how DNS spoofing works exactly. DNS spoofing is difficult to defend against uh, due to the attacks mostly being passive by nature and typically you will never know the DNS is being spoofed until it has actually happened uh, because what you get is a web page that is different than that you are expecting. And in very targeted attacks, it is very possible that you may never know you have been tricked into to enter your credentials into a false site until you receive a call from the bank wondering why you just you have just purchased a new board for let's say for any of your reasons. And that being said, there are still a few things that can be done to defend against these type of attacks. First thing first, secure your internal machines. Attacks like these are commonly executed from inside the network. So if your network devices are secure, then there is less chance of an, uh, um, let's say, less chance of these compromised hosts being used to launch a spoofing attack. And don't or never rely on DNS for secure system. Highly sensitive or secure systems that you typically won't be browsing on uh, an internet, it is often a best pra practice not to use DNS if you're not uh, using that for browsing. If you're just using that as a firewall, then it is best that you do not use DNS. Uh, you need to specifically provide your IP addresses. Uh, if you have software that relies on host name to function, then those can be specifically um, uh, specified manually in the device's host file and or use an IDS that is the best, that would be the best part that's an intrusion detection system and IDS when placed and deployed correctly it can typically pick up most forms of ARP cache poisoning and DNS spoofing and use DNSSEC 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 it is a newer alternative to DNS that uses digitally signed DNS records to ensure the validity of a query response uh, DNSSEC is not yet in, uh, you can say, as it's not in wide development, but it has been widely accepted as the future of DNS. So this is much so that the United States DoD has mandated all the MIL and GOV domains being using begin using the DNSSEC within the next year. And you can read more about the DNSSEC on their own website, and you will know how it exactly it will look like. And finally. DNS spoofing is a very lethal form of my team attack and when it is paired with the right skill and the malicious intent, using this technique we can utilize phishing techniques to uh, deceptively steal your credentials, install malware uh, with a drive-by exploit or even cause a denial of service attack condition. In the next tutorial, again I will be teaching you about how we can go ahead and use the DHCP servers and actually going ahead and poisoning these things and uh, there, there are different parts such as the DNS, the DHCP spoofing, ICMP redirection or even the port stealing and these are quite the type of mature attacks that a hacker will use. He will not just go ahead and most of the time people first try phishing and if they are and if phishing works exactly which do work most of the time 70% of the time if they don't if they do then it's good if they don't then they will try these types of attacks MITM and all these things because these require social engineering to get passed through your network the first thing and second thing would be to actually go ahead and again go ahead and social engineer your way to make a website that looks actually legit but there would be extremely minor differences such as instead of using a google.com you can go ahead and use I'll show you some examples as to how the fake websites would look like over here uh, let me just check if I have the Harvester example still present. Let me check. Okay, uh, I'm sure that I'll use the URL crazy. So if I go and type URL crazy Google uh, space Google.com, then I will get each and every fake uh, website that will go ahead and call itself Google.com, but it will not be. So let's go ahead and check. For example. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, we have n number of websites such as Google.com and Google's.com or Googler.com, Googly.com, and you won't even be able to under recognize that because you'll be using it normally on the internet. And uh, yes, you won't have, you will have no idea how or when you will be, uh, uh, let's say, tricked to go ahead and visit this website. So let's, for the time being, let's go ahead and visit uh, this specific website or. Let's go ahead and visit the one which looks uh, almost real to us. Let's use google.com or google.com. Let's go ahead and copy that and uh, let's see if we will be able to go ahead and visit this website. 
کیا بلیو دا اکاؤنٹ اٹ وڈ ہیو بین ٹیمپرریلی شٹ ڈاؤن آئی بلیو اوکے اٹس نو آئی وانٹ گوگل آٹ ڈاٹ کام اوکے یا پرفیکٹ لیٹس سی Okay, this is the google.com so if you go ahead and see this website uh, normally if you don't actually look in until unless you actually look into it you won't even recognize you will at, uh, just go ahead and read this at google.com and you will just go ahead and read everything so this is how a fake website looks like and normally people will trick you into visiting these websites and you will be fooled and it is not just the iter cap it will all they will also go ahead and use the social engineering to go ahead and social engineer your way their way through it So that is it for this tutorial guys in the next tutorial I will be continuing with DHCP spoofing